Welcome back everyone. I didn't really have any intentions of working on this today, but we had a little thunderstorm come through, about a quarter inch of rain. Made the ground a mess, but it sure cooled it down out here. Dogs, they got clean, cool drinking water, but yet they drink out of dirty old ponds in the middle of the yard. I did start on this axle already, but I've got to take this one back apart because uh, apparently the seal was bad. See, these use a special kind of seal and I wasn't going to replace them because they're sort of expensive. But I had no way of checking this one because there was no oil in this one. The cap was cracked. The other one was missing this plug and they had some silicone in it. The back is going to get some new bearings. They're all going to get new seals. And they are all getting new caps. So I haven't pulled this one apart yet. Let's get the thing apart. This trailer is equipped with Dexter 9K oil bath hubs. My other trailer has 7K grease hubs. Oh boy, none of the rest of them came off this hard. There we go. Mmm, that's some good stuff right there. Mm-hmm. Nut and lock ring. Washer. That thing's stuck on there pretty good. I'm gonna try pressing it off here. Oh, that's always nice. Good stuff right there. Here's our new brake. And I got some new hardware. This I got from Fast and all those quite inexpensive so I have an account there well chrome will have to do I couldn't find the one I was looking for I swear I just had it the other day come on there come on there you go Where 
area. A little too much fur there. Some of this new hardware on there. Now I usually don't use new hardware on a lot of the stuff I do but this trailer is you tend to regret stuff. I don't know the other ones I did these came out so dang hard wrecked the threads on them. So I'm just Ordered enough to do the whole dang thing. Then you kind of know what you got. In case you fellers are wondering, these are the auto adjusters on this unit. It had them on there before too, but they weren't working. It tends to happen to this stuff when it gets rusty. Oh, dropped a nut there. Oh, there you are. Now sometimes these seals will get stuck on here, like when you're pulling it off, but this one did not. Oh, it says right on here, oil side, and these are 307150BG, and it's this inside deal that spins, goes kind of hard at first here, but the camera probably won't show it, but the rubber part sticks to the shaft, and it spins inside of this. So we're going to do what it says here and put the oil side towards the bearing. These can be a little bit of a pain to get started if you don't have a seal driver. But you just got to work them around. Be careful with them. not hitting very hard there and it still turns just fine so can go back on here These things aren't getting any lighter
and a brand new hubcap for it. And for uh, this fits uh, 9, 10, 12, 15 K with a 4 inch by 12 threads. K71 14800. Doesn't that look good? So I just like filling it up in the end here and letting it uh, run through the bearings because when you fill it up in here you tend to overdo it, get it too full and then you end up taking a bunch out anyways. So you usually just fill it up a couple times and then there's a line right here that's uh, how full you're supposed to make it. And it says right on the cap, SAE 90. Well, I'm putting 8090 in it. I'm sure it, you'll get over it. For now, I'm gonna stick the plug in here so we don't get any foreign material in there. And I'll check that after a little bit. So these are the inner and outer races. The inner one's a 382A. The outer one's a 25520. That would mean the bearings are a 387A and a 25580. And once again, I don't have a bearing driver that big. I do have a lot of tools but there's a few things I don't have. Heck, I used to do this for a living at a place and we didn't have a lot of the tools there. Just get them in the best you can like that and then be very careful not to hit the bearing surface. Make sure they're in all the way. Flip her over and do the other one. Clean that out in there a little bit. Depending on what kind of uh, bearing you're putting in, sometimes you'll want to grind down the old race. Because it could get stuck in the groove with the new one. Now obviously this would be a lot easier to drive it in that way if a guy didn't have the brake drum on. But you can carefully drive it down in with a punch. Go around and around. Not sure you guys heard that on the video, but the sound changed once it bottomed out. And we can jam our bearing down in there. I'm going to dump a little bit of oil into it. Spin it around a little. Oh yeah, that's nice and lubed up. This had a different seal in it. It is still a runner in runner seal, but it's just different. But that was leaking, so we're gonna put our new one in with the oil side to the oil side. Still heavy. Now our new outer bearing. Squirt a little bit of oil right down in there. Oh, oh too much. 
getting all over. Dang it. The trailer needed a good oiling down anyways, right? Didn't have to be with brand new oil though. And this one, the threads are a little bit buggered on the end here from having it have a bearing bad at one time. And the hubcap, the oil hubcap is a little goofy too. And tighten her on down to seat that seal. Now this went on pretty hard the first time. Threads are a little goofed up. See so it gets about there and then it cocks sideways on me. There we go. There we go. Now let's see if the oil will stay in it this time. Well, it's the next day, and this thing's gonna get wrapped up today, at least far enough that it can be flipped over. It took me a little bit of doing to find a set of rims that matched the set of rims that I was given with the trailer. Because the original 16.5s look just like these, but they're flat here. And these are not, these are what are called double coined. They don't work with each other, they'll ruin each other. But I had this brand new set and I tried a whole bunch of Chevy rims, thinking they're the same as the originals. They didn't have these raised parts, but this hole here is too small. It would only fit right on the edge here. Well, these are from a Dodge, and they are the right size. So, but you got to do some wiring on the brakes here. It's really not too big of a deal. And throw these wheels on. So we got plenty of new wire with the brakes here. So I'm going to go back to... Uh, I don't know, in there somewhere. Can always zip tie up the 
what uh, isn't really needed. But I don't want to, you know, not have enough. And this stuff here is uh, stranded. It's so is this, but this is a finer stranded wire. It's a little bit more flexible. So I think uh, somewhere eh, there's about good. This is my automatic wire strippers. It's plenty well used. My soldering gun I have here is just a cheap, probably Chinese, whatever. The box says ATD on it. I've had it forever. It's starting to act up a little bit, but as of now, it's still working. It doesn't really matter on these electric brakes. You just uh, pick a wire and go with it here. And I usually like to let them cool down a little bit before you try to put the heat shrink on. Because sometimes they'll start shrinking as you're trying to slide the heat shrink and then you end up not working out so good Well, that's not going anywhere then I just gotta zip tie this up somehow so it doesn't drag on anything or whatever and it's good to go well, I'm gonna get the rest of these done and we can put some wheels on this thing get all the brakes wired up and I seem to be completely out of zip ties so I put some electrical tape on there temporarily don't worry, I'll get it replaced. So, don't appear to have any oil leaks anymore. They're all holding oil good. And I want to do a little check on these things, make sure that they're actually energizing. So I got the pickup parked up there, hooked up. I'm going to go pinch over the brake controller and see if these all hum. I heard some humming back there. That should hold it. Oh, looks like I gotta set these up a ways. Now 
I'll just do that three more times. Well, everything's hooked up and working. One last thing to do to this thing before it can be flopped over. Put them units on. The tires here, they're Gladiator QR25-TS and they're ST235 85R16 trailer tires. Max inflation of 95 PSI, max load of 4,080 pounds. And they they got a pretty nice tread design. I don't know. These wheels are going to look too good for this trailer. Pretty nice looking. I'm sure I could probably get a little bit closer to the trailer, but I don't know 100% where it's going to land. So hopefully everything works out alright here.
nothing to it, right guys? Backo had a hard time getting it to flip up there at first. I know that that jack. <laughs> I I violated that jack. But it's sitting on the ground on all the tires now. Now I can go and put some gravel here in this wet spot. I did have hauled in six loads of gravel. I put, uh, I think it was two on my driveway and the rest in the, just in the little bit here. And it's, it's actually pretty de decent now. So I gotta put a, probably a, just about a whole load right here, the way it looks. And then I need some on the side of my shop. I'm going to hook that thing up to the pickup and see how she handles. seen one of these before flipping it over was kind of sketchy but got her all back on the ground and all hooked up to take her for a cruise I'm sure it isn't gonna handle really any different I've never pulled it with a load on it yet I bought it all messed up so the boards could use a little tension. It's got some rust on it and stuff, but should be good enough for hay. Well, guys, it's starting to rain out. Thanks for checking out my video. See you next time. Take care and God bless. You want to run them?